the way Toga's story has been handled in My Hero Academia, especially with the recent chapters, I gotta say that it has been such an incredible way of displaying a question, a very basic question. What is normal? Normalcy, and we talked about it in the last review, but my gosh, Toga's character, this arc in general, I will keep on saying it over and over again. My Hero Academia shines its brightest when we get to the villain side. A lot to talk about with chapter 226 of My Hero Academia, but man, Toga, baby, Toga. Whether Facebook, Twitter, or the two, make sure to steer clear because I'm coming through like. Honestly, I'm gonna be real with you. I could see this chapter 226 being another reason why people get mad at My Hero Academia. Now, people were very upset with the whole twist and the whole revelation that One For All has, like, six other quirks in it, right? The whole thing of, like, Deku is now about to have all these quirks, he's gonna be overpowered. People were really upset about that fact, but as My Hero Academia is progressing, it's starting to seem like majority of the cast or characters or villains in general are going to be beefing up as well, and I think that this chapter was a huge foreshadowing of what's to come with the even bigger villains and the bigger threats and how strenuous it's going to be trying to take them down based on toga so even though it's just a toga centric chapter it's also very centric to a point that a lot of people were mad at my hero academia that deku is going to be way overpowered what is the point well shoot look at what happened with toga and it also is adding in more sense of it seems as though in the my hero academia world when dna gets altered that's the secret to getting a multiple quirk. That is the secret. Possibly why Todoroki was born with two of them. Because when your DNA is altered or modified, you are allowed to have more than one. And it seems to be the case and how this all makes sense. So already I'm going to dispel the whole thing of people are coming in and saying, BS! Oh my gosh, first Deku, now Toga. No, if anything, it makes more sense. Toga, when she drinks blood, right? Because this whole chapter, which we're going to go into it. Incredible chapter. Great chapter for Toga love it villains all the way but when she drinks blood she's essentially having a piece of their dna so it's only right that as time goes on using it maybe her keeping those stockpiles of like the people that she really likes like ochako and deku keeping stockpiles of them using it multiple times now that blood is slowly getting into her dna so now maybe more times that she uses their blood maybe there's consequences maybe she'll be damaged more or something but maybe the more times she uses the same person's blood the more she's able to use their powers maybe up until this point she's only drinking people's blood here and there but now using somebody like uraraka because we're not talking about a, a boy in her class which again we'll get to we're talking about uraraka so again it makes sense that yeah her quirk is morphing and evolving as she is morphing and evolving as a person which very personal story in this one honestly i felt as though the way horikoshi handled toga's story very dark i was wondering in the last chapter what is it that made toga snap was she just up until 17 a normal girl no it was because she found out early on that she needed to hide her demons and that was the best way that she had a shot at living a normal life even though she felt she was normal because we see the little instances that her parents basically they felt like failures she would come home with like dead birds after drinking their blood because in her mind toga again this is what she finds to be normal normalcy is perspective nothing more nothing less so when toga would do that like how she attacks that boy, right? You know, that's the thing that leads her into this life of crime. But when she would attack a bird, a dead bird, and drink their blood, that was her way of, like, when you kiss somebody, how you like them. So very powerful message, again, of normalcy is in the eye of the beholder. And Toga displayed just that, honestly, this chapter. I ain't gonna lie, Horikoshi trolled a lot. He trolled me a lot through this one, and in a good way, but still, it was a bad way, okay? Because... How many times, I don't know if anybody's with me, how many times did y'all think Toga was dead? How many times did y'all think that that reporter bitch, I'm not even calling her, I don't know what her name is, I don't care what her name is, that reporter bitch 
How many times do you think that she killed our toga, bro? I was so... A couple of times, like, I thought she mashed her head in. I thought, like... I was like, no, no, not toga! And then when she was turning into Uraraka, it was breaking my heart. Like, honestly, if this was in a Seinen magazine, toga would have died. One of the most interesting characters in my Aragonami would have died if this was in a Seinen magazine for adults. The fact that it wasn't is why we had this... Oh, cow! My Hero Academia is getting more popular, so the characters are going to get more stronger to be more cooler looking. And that's why the quirks are mutating and, you know what I mean? And shit like that. Moment. But, I'm not mad at it. Like, I see people being upset by this. I think, if anything, Toga doing that is just adding even more fuel to the fire in terms of that... The villains at the end of all this are going to be incredibly strong. This is probably why an animal like Gigantomachia exists. Maybe All for One didn't really have a quirk either. Maybe he just figured out how to modify people's DNA. And maybe that's how... You know, there's just so many different questions and so many different things to ask. But man, I ain't gonna lie. Th th this chapter, very powerful. Because we're starting to see more and more that this organization that is targeting the League of Villains and how they're basically trying to use the League of Villains as essential martyrs to their cause and what they're trying to accomplish and the obsession. Like, honestly, the grown woman just seemed like a grown woman version of Toga, like a, a psycho, a creep. Like, when she's holding Toga down, I'm just like, no! When she's holding Toga down and telling her about uh, going to court counseling and it seems as though Toga tried a lot. It seems as though her parents really tried hard with her and when she stabbed that boy and drank his blood and left, was when they, they finally said, yo, we can't do nothing no more. You know what I'm saying? So it seems as though they tried court counseling. Maybe that lady did it as well. Maybe this is just two different paths. If you look at it, this reporter woman, because she's so messed up. I mean, you see how fascinated she is with Toga's life and everything. That reporter woman is just simply an older version of, hey, what if Toga hid her demons very well to make it to that point? That's how I feel, honestly. But man, getting back to, again, the thing that is heating everyone up. Toga, as she's there, down, we thought she was killed a million times, she's basically struggling, clinging on to her way of life, fighting back, and then finally, not only does she turn into Uraraka, or Otako, then she also uses her gravity power and lifts up the reporter woman. This is going to play a big role in the future of My Hero Academia, because I see Toga, I see Deku with... All for one was the beginning of what we were going to see. And now Toga is another foreshadowing of, yeah, if somebody like Toga, Toga is, is strong. But let's let be honest here. Toga in the grand scheme of things ain't that big of a threat right now. Maybe when the League of Villains continues to develop, maybe we get a time skip or something like that. It'll be different. Right now where Toga's at, she's not all, a, you know, she's, she's not that big of a threat. But imagine the people that are threats that are capable of tapping into that same type of, you know, power. Imagine when Shigaraki finds out what Toga did, what he's going to try to do, how he's going to try to manipulate things. He's going to try to see, well, okay, what is it that she did that now she has another quirk, essentially? Not only she could copy people's face, but now she could use their ability for a certain amount of time. That is going to be a very dangerous thing and a very huge game changer in My Hero Academia. I can see, again, this being another uproar with My Hero because this is where the series is going. You gotta accept it. The characters are going to get stronger and stronger. I'm glad that it's not just Deku. I'd rather, if they're going to give it to a bunch of people or whatever, then at least it makes more sense that Deku needs to get this strong. And a lot of the other people around him need to get strong as well. And we're going to see that. I think we're going to see once... It gets out there of how Toga was able to manipulate and get that second quirk, essentially, or that second ability. That's how we're going to start seeing it spreading. And it's going to be a real crazy war and why Deku needs to get stronger, why everyone in the team needs to get stronger. So when they do become uh, real heroes at some given point, I would love a My Hero Academia spinoff, I'm just saying. But man, this chapter overall, desperate struggle for Toga. Honestly, the backstory, seeing her childhood, seeing uh, her, her growing up and basically how she had to hide this secret and she couldn't hide it no more. And it kind of makes you question... Is there really a world for somebody like that? Somebody like Toga. That she just... That's her way of being normal. She doesn't feel like she's sad. She feels like she's living a normal life. It's a very interesting question. Overall, the chapter, honestly, though crazy because i see it's going to once again split the my hero academia fandom i feel as though the class a versus class b arc and i might talk about it again in a whole other video i feel as though that's one of the worst arcs in my hero academia because it really did something that i hate and that's it divided the fandom 
From here on out, the My Hero Academia fandom is divided. There's people that they're just always going to be upset when things like what happened with Deku in that arc and what happened with Toga in this chapter. When those things happen, I can see that that side of the fandom is going to come in and destroy it. And then the other side of the fandom is going to come in and protect it. Naruto went through a phase like this and it seems as though whenever you start off a basic story and you don't have all of these extra cool things as the world develops and as stories demand more different things... This is what happens. My Hero Academia started off with a very cool basic concept. People have superpowers. They usually only have one. Occasionally have two. But when you want to build it up to be even grander and you got to make it go longer. My Hero Academia probably would have ended a long time ago. But it's right now one of the cash cows that jumped. They're not going to let it in. So you're going to have more things like this. But I'm not mad at it. I think it makes sense for Toga to have an extra ability. Because that's getting into her DNA. And if DNA morphing is what gave, you know, one for all and all for one the ability to do all these things, it would make sense for Toga. Now, everybody shouldn't be able to tap into multiple quirks. But... There should be a way, and this is going to break in some interesting theories and the future for My Hero. Honestly, it's starting to look more and more like once we had that chapter and that arc where Deku started to show that he was going to have more than one quirk, the story itself changed completely, and Toga is another example, but man, I ain't mad at it because it was a freaking awesome chapter. I would say that this was a solid 7.5 to an 8 even in 8, I would say Toga just ran this chapter. It was great. I, I, I just was so mad. Like, no, no killer. Ah, no killer. But it was freaking incredible. Kind of curious what you guys think about this, though. For starters, what do you think about the whole thing of now Toga's quirk morphed? Just like Deku. Do you think that's going to be par for the course with the remainder of My Hero Academia? Shigaraki's going to undergo it at some given point. Is that why people like Giganto Machia is so strong? And people like One For All. Also, what do you think about Toga's struggle? Honestly, this chapter was freaking crazy. Like... The war against the League of Villains started off already very strong with one of the weaker players. I can imagine when we get to the bigger ones, it's going to be freaking insane. And your real thoughts and expectations, My Hero Academia 226. I'm just glad they didn't kill Toga, okay? I'm just glad, despite the hate that My Hero is about to get, because again, another evolving quirk. Don't kill my Toga, okay? Toga is bae. But that's all I have for this one. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you want more from me, make sure to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram. Hit the bell to get all notifications. Please hit that bell. Uh, YouTube don't really send out notifications unless you hit the bell and you get like, you got to double tap it. So I'd appreciate it. And if you want to follow any of my social media, links, of course, in the description below. I'm Fin World. And as always, people, have an awesome day. And remember the golden rule. Anime and manga. For life, boy! Bow! Have an awesome day. Can't forget the music though. Hold on, let me play y'all a little something. Everything good always comes to an end. If you stab me in my back, we can never make amends. Trying to move to acceptance, hard to accept it. Mistakes like mirrors, gotta reflect it. I don't wanna fucking leave, but I gotta leave. Leave the maybes to the crazies. Maybe one day we. There I go, a man, son, in a subtle way. No more copies, leave without a trace.